Let's go to Giles Beckford, our business editor in Wellington. Hi, Giles. Unemployment evening, numbers Giselle. out. Oh, how are you? I'm excellent, thank you. Good. Unemployment numbers out, job numbers, what are they telling us? Well, a little bit, as we were hearing just uh, that last item in the news headlines, unemployment ticked up to 5.2%. Uh, and while you might think that that's a bad sign, actually, it's uh, one of those statistical things that occurs about the way Statistics New Zealand gather these numbers and crunches them. Uh, but the reality is that the size of the workforce of people available to work grew at a quicker rate than the economy was able to create jobs. But when you look at it, Last year we created uh, 138,000 jobs. Now, mm. you know, that's a that's massive number. Uh, in some re really key sectors such as construction, uh, services sectors that are related to tourism, uh, retail and the like, and also the ancillary services such as architects and designers and all those sort of things, they're booming and doing, doing really well. So we're showing that an economy that's growing around 3.5% is generating uh, a solid number of jobs. Uh, the size of the workforce will tend to go up and down. It will reflect the level of immigration that we have. 70,000 people in 2016 uh, settled here. That's bound to boost the size of the workforce. Uh, so we will expect, uh, shouldn't be uh, too surprised to see the jobless rate rise. But uh, in all likelihood, it will dip below 5%. Um, at the moment, we're humming along. But what it does show is some, some dislocation between what were the jobs we are creating uh, and the jobs that we actually need, the, that companies need. And one of the biggest complaints that we hear is that firms have trouble finding the right people with the right skills to fill their positions. Um, and that's probably a broader issue that we need to sit down as a country with policymakers and smart people and ordinary folk on the street and say, how do we actually address a really basic issue such as that? Because those are the sort of keys to the future, the next 10, 15, 20 years in this country with all the dislocation that's happening with technology and the like that we actually need to start thinking at really very seriously. I suspect another issue people want to talk about is relatively low wages and very low wage growth. Is there, are there numbers around that, Giles? The numbers that came out today showed, uh, this is from the Labour Cost Index. Now, depending on which side of the fence you're on, whether you're a politician, you're a worker, a unionist, you're in a company, you can take whatever labour measure, yeah. labour cost measure you want. But we use the Labour Cost Index. Uh, it just gives you a broad measure of wages. They grew 1.6% for the private sector uh, without overtime last year. And with a, a strong pool of labor, lots of people chasing jobs, of course, except in some key areas where the uh, employer will have to pay over the odds to attract people, then we can expect that wage growth is gonna be quite slow. But you know, the other side of that is that it doesn't boost inflation. It will keep the Reserve Bank relatively happy. Uh, we expect that they should sit on the sidelines for the rest of the year, leaving their cash rate unchanged. Right, thanks Charles. What do the markets do today? Uh, once again, a bit of a negative day for the top 50 index shares, down 19.7,032. thousand The New Zealand dollar has fallen about three quarters of a cent today. Those, uh, the employment numbers in the end, because they reduce the likelihood of any change in interest rates from the Reserve Bank, it takes that little bit of should we say puffery speculation out mm. of the currency so it fell to 72.6 euro cents and 96.1 australian giles bickford our business editor thank you so much